Hi, this is Mr. Titanium, i.e. Richard Wagner. I'm your host, Richard Wagner, and today we're going to speak about the negative charge of DNA. It turns out that DNA carries a negative charge as regard to its phosphate backbone. This negative charge has been instrumental in most of the research done in the 20 and 21st century. How this works is that scientists would often prepare a sample of DNA by expanding it. After they expand it, they would uh, create a sheet of agar. On this sheet, they would connect electrodes, positive electrodes at the top, negative electrodes at the bottom. What they would do is they would put the DNA in the bottom well with the negative elect electrode. Next to that, they would have something called a ladder. A ladder consisted of a sample with known particle sizes. Those known particle sizes, as an example, could have been, you know, 50 kilobase pairs, 100 kilobase pairs, 150, 200, 250, so on up. What happens is after the, after the scientists prepared the agar gel, they would turn on the electricity. The DNA would, the negative DNA would migrate to the positive, to the positive electrode. The only thing is, is that the small DNA would migrate much faster than the larger DNA. So all the small DNA particles migrated together towards the top, whereas the larger stayed at the bottom. When you were done and you turned off the electricity, you could examine where the bars landed. If you had a bar that landed next to the seventh bar on the ladder, then you know that your sample was approximately 350 kilobase pairs. And it turns out that the size uh, is not only... A characteristic, but an identifying property. And that's how we were able to identify the nature of the DNA. So for example, if the pattern that we were expecting didn't match the pattern that we got, then the DNA that we sampled isn't the DNA that matched. And if the DNA doesn't match, well, as the story goes, the child ain't mine. Hope you have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.